Uh, morning. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, yes, I'm an Ulster man, although I haven't lived there for a long time, uh, and I live down in Dublin. Uh, we're uh, working with DMG Media down in Dublin as well. Um, after having lived in, in Canada for quite a few years, and also uh, in the UK, uh, previous background was working in the airline sector. We didn't come from the, the world of journalism. Um, what we did with the airline sector was look at look to book ratios for the airlines, uh, try to help them build up their, uh, their booking platforms. And the most interesting discovery there in that world uh, was about using people's actions and programmatic decisions, or making programmatic decisions from people's actions uh, in order to sell certain components of the booking process, like insurance, like baggage. Um, so that was quite a, a while ago, and those, uh, the application of those types of decision making really goes across the spectrum of any digital product. Um, so then the world of publishing became an opportunity that we thought was definitely worth pursuing because uh, it's quite a long ways to go from publishing to e-commerce, but we see that it's actually happening. I'll discuss a little bit about that uh, to come up. And Doug can introduce himself. Good morning. Um, the interest of disclosure, I'm completely commercial, so I'm, I'm sorry for all the, all the season. I respect journalists hugely. Um, of course you do. Of course I do. Um, without you guys, we couldn't sell our pages effectively. So really my job is to effectively generate as much revenue per page as humanly possible. Um, and I'm reminded of that because we have a board meeting today, actually, in Derry Street. So uh, there we go. But basically, what you know, what's interesting to me is that, and we'll talk about it in a, in a few minutes, is that we look after um, the Daily Mail, so Kim Kardashian's juggernaut uh, in Ireland, and that we've kind of been very lucky with because that's a destination website. We don't really have to do a huge amount in terms of uh, social, in terms of, you know, prostituting ourselves. Um, now, we launched a new website a couple of years ago as a little kind of sister website to the Daily Mail. And it was a real learning curve for all of us. And this is how we kind of, we came across Michael at, 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 at the Web Summit, in fact, and um, very interested to see the tech. So this whole story is really about how we engage and retain our audience. Um, that website is evoke.ie. Um, so, to give the backstory, I guess, um, we don't want, really want to stand up here and talk about what Social Honey do, but we'll end up talking about it uh, by just by th that's the use case. But the point is not to stand here and make a salesy pitch to you guys. It's more, uh, we keep hearing about data, and we keep hearing about how powerful it is, uh, but very few people are getting into the crux of what you actually do and how that manifests in terms of productivity, how that manifests in terms of the revenue generated from these changes, so the applicable changes. Um, so Evoke had a problem. Uh, they were starting out from the get-go, uh, from, from ground zero, basically. Yeah, I mean, and, and like any website you launch today, it's 98% it's mobile, and unfortunately, as we mentioned earlier, you know, in terms of the audience acquisition piece, we have to rely heavily on social. So, um, you know, there's challenges there. So, um, you know, for us, really, the idea of spending large budgets uh, to re-engage your audience, the same people over and over again, just makes no sense, particularly from an advertising perspective. And we move into the, the native content side of things when dwell time and engagement is really important. That, that really, really comes to the fore. So again, look, this is, you know, what, what, female 25 to 44. Of course the space is crowded because that's where the money is. So really, you know, what we're trying to do here is cut through as much as we can in the space. And it's no easy task to launch a website um, today in a market that pretty, is pretty much choked, you know? I mean, there is another model where people would say you're better off to have a series of small, very focused, laser-focused websites and daisy-chain them together into a network. You know, and that there's merit to that, of course, but we like selling shampoo, so, uh, yeah. And this is what most people think of whenever they, they think about females 25 to 34. This is the, the, the idyllic picture that you see on slide decks. Uh, but uh, the thing that kind of impressed us whenever we started working with DMG was that 
they actually went out to find out who those people were. They stood on the streets. They asked them real old school data analysis where you stand and ask questions to real human beings and then come back and do the grunt work of taking the answers and the responses from that and compiling that data. Um, so this was Emer, a real person, uh, standing on the streets that actually read the type of content that they thought that they could produce. Um, and, but then they still had a problem because they had identified their audience, they had the content to, uh, that they thought could acquire that audience, and things were kind of hitting a bit of a plateau whenever we started to work with them. Um, and the th coming from outside of publishing actually put us in a pretty good position to look at things quite objectively. Uh, and the first thing that we noticed straight away was it's not about the content. So you step into a publishing house and uh, the first thing that everybody wants to solve a problem with is creating more journalism or a better piece of editorial or more editorial or can we get more editorial or can that person write another follow-up on that? It seems to be the, the, the message that you hear back on a regular basis. So we had to kind of get away from that idea that it's, it's not about the journalism a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the time it's about product. It's about an entirely different part of the business in the digital um, business that they're now running. Uh, and that's where the e-commerce side comes in. You're actually selling people's engagement time to customers, not readers, to customers. You have a brand value with that customer and a lifetime value with that customer that you hope to achieve in micro incremental uh, visits from them over years. So with that, product uh, funnels become the way to focus on your digital side, the product side of how you're doing. So still separate from the journalism. Those, a lot of times, some people will have known these from, from product world. If you've seen them before, raise your hands. Good, great, a couple of, couple of people have, have already seen them before. Uh, these are the R metrics, pirate metrics. Uh, they're used in a lot of SaaS companies. Uh, basically, to get an idea of what your costs are, your fixed costs for getting people through the door, and what the potential longer term value is in return from that initial cost of acquisition. So running through the acquisition uh, basically is how to get people in through the door, your, your paid audience a lot of the time uh, in these uh, startup scenarios of journalism. The activation, what that user's journey looks like whenever they get in through the door. So you've got them in from, from Facebook. What is their experience whenever they arrive? Uh, the retention is basically how, not only how, how you getting them to stick around, but how much time are they spending and eventually what the revenue is derived from that. Is there a direct relationship between that retention and the, um, the revenue derived? And referral is basically the, the way to reactivate that funnel again because if you're, getting, uh, if you're paying out for, uh, for Facebook or, or Twitter uh, inbounds and you're not getting any activation, from, uh, from referrals from organic, then it's gonna cost you money to, to buy them back in again. I think that is, this is most obvious whenever you look at, even as recent as June 29th, Facebook changed back again from news type stories back to friends and family focus on their, fe on their news feeds. Um, you're just in the text, Doug, but basically this, this problem meant that social referral was a new, um, was, was basically given to you for free that you were getting users organically from Facebook because they read and shared, but now because they read and share it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get any acquisition from that. So you gotta buy them back in. So if you don't know what the cost of acquisition of the reader is in comparison to the lifetime value of that reader over a given period that you hope to make that return, how do you know how much to spend? Those, those are actually product problems. Um, so we built a few things that, um, that helped analyze that, one of which is uh, audience analysis in real time, much like uh, Chartbeat or Parsley, um, basically saying how your content is performing, but in our case, who that content is performing with, uh, who's being acquired, who's being retained. And it just helps the editorial team follow up with stories that are winning more so than uh, stories that are losing. But this is the acquisition flow we mentioned lean methodology um, yesterday, it's a different type of lean. This is more in the principles of uh, lean software engineering. We're building, measuring, learning over that in a very iterative process. 
And that's something that the guys picked up pretty early on, where you're building the, the piece of content and you're measuring that content, and then you're learning from the, the performance of that content, specifically by looking at who it performed with. But then that's fine from an editorial perspective, but if you have issues with the activation and the retention, it doesn't matter, ultimately, if your product is struggling with those simple uh, acts of friction getting to the bottom of the page, seeing an opportunity to recycle. So we focused on a couple of things. And first things first, um, how many people know what the load time on 3G is for their website? Yeah. 13 right. seconds. Sorry. 13 <laughs> seconds. And if you look at it, they ended up at 13 seconds. Wow. It's, uh, it's shocking. If you look at it from a product perspective, it takes a person who already managed to tweak their, um, uh, their interests online. You spent the money to get them through the door. And then you stand them at a shop door and go, eh, let's just kind of get you in through the door. It's very, very slow, very cumbersome. And not surprisingly, people bounce because they can't be bothered waiting around. So they focused on that wholeheartedly. Um, and it was probably one of the most impressive things for us that, that they, they didn't question, uh, oh, we don't want to do this. Uh, they basically said, no, this is a clear problem. We're going to really take things uh, by the scruff of the neck and deal with them. I think that was. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our focus was, I mean, obviously, from a commercial perspective, um, you know, things like never mind ad viewability. I mean, we just wanted people to even see the pages for a start. Um, and ultimately, what's the funny thing about Ireland is that there's a higher rate of mobile penetration. I think it's probably because we're probably dodgy broadband in the center of, of the country. So a lot of people are on mobile. So for us, the, the main issues were things like, we got to get the ads seen. We got to get the article seen. Native is vital for us. So we managed to get that down to, to a very reasonable um, low time. And it's funny, because at the moment, Google, this is obviously Google are selling a product, but effectively, for them, their whole thrust is actually that speed. Speed is the most important, the biggest threat at the moment. And people just don't necessarily take a step back and look and say, do you know what? Actually, I might have great content. I might have a great strategy. But you know what? The user experience from the user working backwards is poor in a lot of cases on mobile. Yeah, I think the AMP project is, is definitely going in the right direction there. I think people are, uh, Facebook tried with instant articles as well. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really matter which you adopt, just that you think about it and try to adopt it, because the difference in terms of um, the, the numbers on the ground are quite significant uh, with the conversions. Um, so now you've got people coming in through the door. You're acquiring who's going to work with the, with the story. You're getting them in through the funnel pretty quickly. Uh, you're not holding them back anymore. Now you want to retain them in some way. Um, so we basically, we build a persona of what every reader is interested in, uh, like a DMP, um, but for their interests in the type of content. Then we look at all the rest of the content that the reader has read in the past and also what's available on the site and then recommend the right content to the right person at the right time that they haven't read before. Uh, and the importance is that you're trying to create an opportunity by getting them through the funnel quicker, but then you're also trying to use relevancy uh, that was mentioned yesterday in the, in the comp score piece, relevancy to uh, keep them feeding on a session. And you see this with Netflix and, and lots of other uh, products as well, that if you can keep people within a session for longer uh, in terms of interest and relevancy to their current context, then they will engage for longer. So this is basically what happened. And um, also on Mail Online, um, at, the, at the bottom, are you more likely whenever you're reading about Emma Watson and her uh, I guess, lack of uh, feminism in uh, some of her recent statements and choices. Um, in the relevant articles that you're going to read, are they related to what you're currently interested in? Or are you just going to pick up the next top news story? Um, there's a 54% increase on the one on the right, the relevancy. So with Evoke, um, the numbers were quite staggering, much more impressive than anyone anticipated whenever we started working out. Uh, if you can focus on acquiring the right person, making their journey into the website uh, as frictionless as possible, 
and retaining them with relevancy and opportunity. These are the actual numbers over the course of a year. A year, yeah. From January to January, um, over a thousand percent like for like increase in click through. I mean, I think the important thing as well, and a way I often describe it to people, if we have one chance on mobile to engage with somebody, the ideal would be to give somebody their unique homepage, content that's served to them in a programmatic manner, but stuff that they're interested in. I often, you know, if we wrote about knitting and we knew you were into knitting, we'd probably serve you that story. You know, and all I'm really concerned about, quite frankly, is the return on investment every page has to earn. And here we see a doubling of our page views since we ran this test, or since we've actually engaged with Social Honey. So for us, you know, it pays for itself, but ultimately we're seeing, and we get this on feedback from our, uh, our, our readers, you know, they're enjoying what they're reading and they're spending time, and the native piece is vital for us. So we, we operate, like a lot of publishers, a guaranteed read model. So in order to really generate those, those reads, it's all about dwell time, it's all about engagement. If we have a video on the page, it's about the completion rate of that video. So it's vital that we serve the correct story to the correct cohort. And thus far, it's been very interesting. Another thing worth mentioning is that we have a recommendation widget on the site which recommend the next story you may be interested in. So prior, we, did, we ran an A-B test, so we had just a static image and the exact same image except it was an animated GIF. When we ran that A-B test, we did 33% uplift in the number of people engaging with the articles. What does that tell us? Something we already know, video is vital, it's so important. So, so previously there was a, an internal recycle rate uh, of about 2 to 3% on, on the site, and now it's up at around 22%. Uh, and that's a staggeringly high of people that, that will engage and consume more content, and just through opportunity and relevancy and making that as easy as possible for someone to consume the content that they're already there for in the first place. Remember, at the, st at the top of that funnel, they came in a lot of the time from social to a story that you created with great journalism. So back to the original point, it wasn't about the journalism. There are simple steps within products, and that's whether it's Social Honey or any other product or tool or, or even in-house consultant that you guys use. If you're focusing on the, on the right parts of your, of your business in terms of the digital product that you sell through the engagement time, uh, then there are major gains to be used from dealing with the specific data that you collect and not just data for data's sake. Uh, and that's us, I think. That's us. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, first of all, uh, one, one question for each of you. First of all, Michael, I have to say your, your percentage numbers are hugely impressive, but I was, I was, I, one phrase stood out. You said one, one aim was to encourage micro-incremental visits. Mm -hmm. How micro? Well, it's dependent actually on what the monetization strategy of the publisher are. Uh, if you think that someone coming in to your website uh, and seeing one page view or two page views per session is a bad thing, you're focusing on that individual uh, moment, not looking at what the lifetime value return is of that reader. So that person may have been acquired first time and then in subsequent visits are actually coming as direct referrals. Uh, as our direct traffic. I, 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 I take your point, but um, very recently I had the pleasure of interviewing Sir Martin Sorrell uh, on, on stage at IPC in Amsterdam, and he came out with quite a memorable phrase which I'd like you to comment on. You must never assume that a five second view of video with the sign turned off is the same as a 30 second national television ad or 40 minutes spent reading the Times newspaper. Aren't you in the five second with a sign turned off category? I disagree. Uh, I, I think that there are differences between them. I think he's, he's correct. Uh, but I think that over the course of a month, if I have 10, 12, 16 visits to the same website, I'm as much of a fan of that website. They may have bought me in the first two, three times. But by me going there by choice afterwards, yeah. I've, dis I've actively shown my interest in that type of content. I may not be a long session user, but I am a long-time long customer. 
Yep, got it, got it. That's a very important distinction. And, and uh, one, one, just, just one for you, Doug. I know you're group head of digital, but I, I can't resist asking you the most fundamental question, um, I think, facing the media. Print declines, print brings in the vast majority of the advertising. So far, digital uh, has increased its numbers, but nothing like uh, enough to make up for the loss of print advertising over time. Can you help the poor bastards? That's a really good point. I mean, you know, I would you look back at the days of, of, from a commercial perspective of selling a full page color ad. Yes. I mean, I, I long for those days. That was easy. I mean, managing something now, a campaign for a quarter of the value, takes treble the time. But the danger here is that with the decline of print, if that revenue just migrates away from publishers altogether. So you're right, there's a deficit at the moment digitally. The other fear we have is that we've platformed social platforms who are basically... Without we, creating any content apps at all, or virtually I mean, no yeah, we, we, you know, if, they, if Facebook had their way, it would be entirely instant articles. And we, you know. Is there an answer to this problem? Or, or is it one of those, Well, it's just, it's just technological change? It's technological change, but I think there's, from a, from a commercial perspective, we're starting to see, certainly in our market, a, um, a realization among ad agencies and publishers. And in fact, we have to look at yield. We have to increase yield, or else, quite frankly, they'll go out of business. We'll go, you know, we'll go out of business. Um, so what we're seeing is things like, it's funny you mentioned about the video. That's, that's an interesting piece. I mean, Martin Sorrell's obviously correct in terms of the way it's engaged with, but unfortunately, that's just the world we live in. It's five seconds, no sound. Um, and it's still a, a very interesting to me the number of publishers that don't even address that. And they, they don't, particularly from a, a commercial perspective, there's no branding for yeah. 20 seconds. You know, there's no, there's no uh, subtitles. But to answer your question, the only thing we can do is to um, look at replacing lost revenue with, now, to a certain degree, um, and I can speak longer about this, but native, the native content question has, has you know, it's a little bit played out because that, that, we haven't quite got there yet. I don't think we've, uh, we've um, ad agencies are a little bit skeptical now about the, um, you know, measuring the, the, the real, the real yeah. accuracy and, and, and how well that does. So to answer your question, there isn't really, I'm hoping that we can, we just have to up the yield. It's the only thing we can do and educate both the agencies that, you know, if we don't do this and this money just vanishes out of the market, video potentially, is another area, but it's, it's, it's very difficult. There is no, I, I don't have the answer, quite frankly. And I'd like to think that uh, we could, but I don't know, you look at our own company and the vast majority of our revenue is still a print, you know, and that's, that's, that's you know, it's gonna be, I would find it hard at the current yield model to, uh, to basically spend that money. Maybe Michael can come to your aid. Maybe he can. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank, thank you very you. much indeed for a splendid.